Masking is a tool that every editor needs to know, really. Basically, yeah, everyone. If you're doing effects, if you're doing transitions, if you're just doing like a normal edit, you might want to know how to mask. So I'm going to show you the different ways that you can mask within DaVinci for free, because I don't can't afford the studio version yet. So within DaVinci, we have our first set of footage, and I want to replace the Trust Jesus sign with something else. Let's use a video from my React channel. So with this DaVinci sign selected, we can head into Fusion. This is the first place that you can do, you know, masks. And it's all up here. So there's four options. You have your rectangle tool, which evidently creates a rectangle and you can move this around. There's controls down here for your center point, as well as the width of the rectangle and the height of the rectangle. And then you can also adjust the corners as to whether or not you want to have them to have a bend, a curve, and obviously the angle of the rectangle. Now you can obviously invert this so you can remove it and that's what we will be doing. So if you wanted to use a rectangle for this because it's just a still image, there's no sort of rotation, no annoyingly this does have rotation, but you can use it this way around and adjust the size to fit and then click invert and then the sign will be masked out. The level on these controls is just whether or not the mask is visible. So as you can see, if we adjust the level, then it's just all, the entire plate just disappeared. I have no idea what the filter is. The filter correlates to the soft edge. So if you expand this, as you can see, it's softening the edge a little bit more and you might want to use this at the moment, it doesn't work, but for certain instances, you might want to blend the mask in better. So it's not just a solid line. And so you can soften the edge. And then the filter, it just depends what sort of go what sort of blur you want on the filter. So you might be able to see a small difference here as I change through the box, the Bartlett, the Morty box, the Gaussian blur and the fast blur. Some of them don't have anything, but you can adjust this to however you want. I always just leave it on Gaussian because it's just kind of standard. And that is the rectangle tool. Now the ellipse is basically the exact same, but obviously, you know, a circle. Now these two, so the polygon one, so with this selected with the polygon, and then you click invert so you can see what you're masking, you can then mask manually. So similar to if you were to adding a mask in Premiere Pro or After Effects, you just select the points and you can add the curves and if you hold alt you can adjust which one is it control and if you hold control so you select a point obviously at the moment when i move this both points move but if i hold control just this one will move and so sometimes you might want to use that if you're adjusting just one particular point and you don't want everything else to be adjusted afterwards and you can just go around here and obviously mask the shape out that you need to mask out and everything else is basically the same, just with the Gaussian blur and the level and everything. The cool thing with these ones though, is that you don't have to manually put in the keyframe. So as you can see down here, when I started the shape, it's automatically selected the keyframe for us. So if we just move forward a frame or a few frames, we can then just highlight all of these, use the arrow keys and you can move it all the way down. And then it will automatically would have added a keyframe in for us and it will be moving. So you don't have to worry about clicking the keyframe. You just go through frame by frame and adjust the, key, the keys however you want. That's the polygon. The next one along the line is a B spline. Now this one you can't add curves to because it automatically does it for you on the curve. So it's basically adding, it's like the rectangle, but with the corners bent. So I'm not sure when you would use this, but it's there. And that's basically everything on the Fusion page, but you can also go over to the color page and you can also mask in here. So if you right click on the side, add source alpha and drag this blue to connect to the blue. This will now allow you to remove a foreground and just have an empty background. So if you have a head over to this tool here, this is the the masking window now this button allows you to do your own one this one adds a circle this one adds a square so it's, it's it's basically the same but it's slightly different controls so rather than the controls being separate for you to add like you know the the feather it's on the side here so you can add the feather in rather than being a blur it's an actual smooth feather and when it comes to keyframes you do have to make sure you select it so if this is at the start add a keyframe on the corrector and then this is moving, so then you wanna, I don't know, change the size of it or something like that. And then it'll add the keyframe for you like this. So you do have to make sure you select on it. And then you also have the option, if you're messing with color, for a gradient one. So you can add this gradient button down here and it'll allow you to add a sort of gradient wipe sort of thing. So you could do your own sort of gradient wipe transition. If you started this out and added a keyframe, and then made it go all the way in and flip to the other side or just extend like this and reveal the background. So you can mess around with transactions like that as well. So like this, for example, you can 
have this wiping up and then if you head back into here and move this across then it will be revealing the background woo how cool you do of course have the option of adding these pans and tilts and doing it manually uh, in this case pan and tilt is just left and right up and down and then the rotation and the opacity of you know the mask itself and it's as simple as this to so just deselect it so with that selected you just click on that and deselect it and you can add if you're add, adding your own one in if you're using it for transitions or video effects then use the fusion version if you want to add any sort of mask to color so you wanted to make this area say brighter than the rest then that's when you would be doing this what is going on here so we do this and then we can head over to color and we make this brighter Ooh, it's really bright now obviously we can uh, on this one reset all of it and hide that and there you go the mask is showing on that as brighter so if you want to mess with the color you can do that use the mask in the color grade separately so you don't have to worry about masking out what you want to color separately within here into fusion and then duplicating it and then color grading that separately color grading has its own built-in masking which i think is quite cool let's let's just mask my video onto the sign shall we so for this i'll be using fusion and then i'll head in and use the poly tool because i can get you know i can manipulate it the way i want it to be manipulated and now i'm playing on a billboard that's how you mask in da vinci